that all of you are very tired and it's been a long morning. So thanks to you uh, for the ones who are still here. Uh, it's been a real pleasure to be in Ahmedabad. Tamne joine khub khub ananda thayo. Okay, so I have a topic that, in fact, in preparing, I also learned a lot. I was 17 years old when TV came into India. So, yeah, so my parents had no problem with TV and me. Uh, well, with my son, TV was already there, so the biggest problems I had were actually handling TV. And uh, smartphones still hadn't come out. So once he became an adolescent, a little later, you know, uh, after he was about uh, 10, 12 and plus, that's the time smartphones came out, but WhatsApp and all was not there. So there was not so much of uh, kind of um, so many applications. So I really uh, sympathize with parents today because I know it's, it's, there's so much to deal with. Uh, so I may turn to some of the younger parents because you all are really in the thick of things and uh, what I'm going to talk about is linked to what happens today, but uh, I think I myself didn't experience it, thank God, because I was born in the last century, uh, many years back. So children and media, as you know, this is a very important topic, and at the end of the last century, this was my family, right? And that was my family with the TV, and my son and my mother used to have these... Uh, uh, big arguments because my mother wanted to watch the news and my son wanted to watch Scooby-Doo. So he used to grumble to me, he used to call my mother Avo. He says, uh, Avo is troubling me, you know, she's not giving me the remote to hold in my hand. And my mother would say, look at Dhruv and all, I told him that I won't change the channel but I want to watch the news. So, <laughs> so I had to handle the arguments between my, my mother and my son because ours was a three generation family. What's the situation now? <laughs> this is the situation now. We're very, very young children. They are experts with handling media. They know how to handle a phone better than their parents, right? And they don't have the fear also that if they handle it, something is going to happen. So how do parents now deal with this? So is media a marvel? How would we do our work? How would we communicate if we didn't have it? Or is it a monster? Where now we know that we have obesity, we have even myopia, the tremendous increase in the number of children who are short-sighted because of the close proximity to screens that they're watching. The average, do you know how much a child, this uh, study was done from eight to 18 years, and they looked at the average amount of screen time of children between 8 to 18 years in the USA. And you don't, do you know what the average amount they watch screens per day? 7 hours and 38 minutes. And two-thirds of these children had no limits on screen time. Then there were no rules in the house. Okay, because parents were probably as busy on the screens. So is it a marvel or a monster? So I'm going to play a little game. I want you, to, I'll put up the name of a... Uh, app or a, a media and if you, you've heard about it, you've used it, please put up your hands and if you've not, put your hand down. Okay, so we'll start. The first one is, uh, oops, I think I'll just change this. I'll just use the cursor. So. Yeah, so Facebook, how many people are on Facebook? Use Facebook, put it right up, okay? Okay, so almost, I would say more than 50%. What happened to Facebook? Okay, Facebook. Right. Next one, YouTube. How many of you access YouTube? Okay, 50%. WhatsApp, 75%. Skype, okay. It's getting lower. Video gaming, okay. As children or whatever, as younger, okay, so we can see most of the crowd here is I think 30 plus then. Uh, Twitter, how many of you have Twitter accounts? Okay, quite a few. Instagram, okay, you all are the young ones, huh? <laughs> the Instagram. Snapchat, okay, great. Pinterest, okay, a few. Oh, uh, what did I do next? QQ, how many of you are using QQ? 
none flicker none okay so these are all the apps that are stumble upon stumble upon is which kind of guide you de depending on your interest flickster which is movies tumblr okay so these are the apps okay google plus of course and uh, myspace which is very much used by young people and uh, reddit okay which uh, is actually um, used by people with special interests ravelry for example is used by people who do needlework and so there are these special interest groups who have their own apps quora lets you ask questions and gives you answers and again meet me which is an online uh, chat for young people so a lot of our young people are using apps which we know nothing about so if we are working with young people we should you know talk to them more as uh, dr nischel said find out what are the social media apps that they are using and quite often it's much more than just uh, facebook and uh, instagram and and twitter right so how do we handle this plethora of uh, of media that that faces us and how has media changed our lives you all familiar with this we socialize through media right from when we are very small it's very easy to put a one year old in front of an ipad put on some you know music or nursery and the child will be sitting like that quiet and not troubling uh, the parent a lot of our relationships and friendships are online it's much easier to have a friend online who you don't have to meet face to face who doesn't argue with you who doesn't uh, kind of let you down and of course therefore young people are spending a lot of time online it's changed our eating habits uh, we are now eating while watching as well as what we eat and therefore as uh, dr nischel has said all the problems of metabolic syndrome how we pass our time you know now we're never bored we have two free minutes what do we do we put our phones and start checking our messages or watching youtube videos how we play our toys children now they will tell you what they want based on what they view and they will ask the parents to buy those things how they dress you see that uh, you know the way parents dress children a lot of it comes from what they are watching and of course how we spend our money and media plays a huge role in getting us to spend whether it's a bigger car or a bigger house or a fairer skin and uh, um, so on one of my major concerns is safety and cyber bullying is something that we all need to be very very aware about uh not only for our own children but also when we are professionals for uh, other uh, people's children uh the sexual content which doesn't necessarily have to be in x rated movies there's sexual content in advertisements uh which are uh, aired during children shows and of course the violence which is very very worrying so anybody recognizes this place right it's a place in amdabad okay and i believe you can get whatever you want over there correct everything you want now the internet is like that you can get whatever you want from the internet sitting in the comfort of your home am i right would you leave your child alone in this place drop your child and go home how many of our children are alone on the internet okay so we have to think of the internet as a marketplace where your child can go and it's so easy to access whatever you want okay at the click of a button so how are we going to parent in a situation like this of course we can't be policemen we can't be 24/7 uh you know at our child's back monitoring what they are doing and this is the digital divide where as i uh, said earlier the children know much more than the parents when it comes to electronic media they know how to operate it they talk about it they discuss it right and very often we have to turn to them they have to teach us uh, about how it works and this gap is getting even wider as more and more applications and uh, you know the interest increases so 
I'm going to talk about, as I said, the things that are of major concern. So media violence. Uh, if you look at violent content on media, it's all over. It's not only in the movies, it's also in programs. And uh, Dr. Nishal did address it, that it definitely leads to aggressive behavior in children. And there are over 1,000 research studies to prove this. If children are watching violent content, and very often this is serious violent content, killing and stabbing and very, very graphic, you know how when you see it, it's so graphic. These children are much more likely to take what they see on the screen into their real lives. And that they, they lose their fear, okay? Or they may become more fearful both ways. So it makes them more aggressive, but it also makes them more fearful. And it makes them less sensitive, it desensitizes them. Because if you have been playing a game where you're stabbing people or you're shooting people and that's earning you points and you go to a higher level, when you see it on TV or when you experience it in real life, someone tells you about an inc incident, it's almost like this d doesn't really matter because you know uh, it's, so, it's become so common. And therefore, it is more damaging to children less than eight years, okay? And these are young children who are playing these games. Very often, media fails to show the consequences. What happens when there's violence? And uh, you know, problems cannot be solved through uh, violence. In fact, problems are increased if we have violent solutions. So let's look at cyberbullying, which is one of the common ways in which children are now facing victimization. There was a study in India ranks third in the world after China and Singapore. So 77% of children said that they had been victims of cyberbullying. And of course, this can take various forms, calling them names, spreading rumors, saying mean things. But what happens with cyberbullying is that it doesn't happen within the playground or the classroom or on the school bus. It's out there into the big wide world. So the impact is much, much more. So what, like, how do you detect this? that there's a change in the child's behavior, both in their online behavior. So for example, if a child is being cyberbullied, the parents will find now they're avoiding being online. Okay, they, they want to be more secret. They don't want the parents to watch what they're watching. Okay, as well as offline, they may become more anxious, refuse to go to school, right? More withdrawn. So we have to keep a watch on both these things. Prevention is always better than cure, so we must talk to our children before cyberbullying. Would you give your child a car without talking about how to use it? Definitely not, but again, you know, one-year-olds, two-year-olds are being given a phone in their hand and they figure out how to use it. So the thing is we must talk about these things before we give this tool in a child's hand because it can be a fantastic tool. I mean, nobody can banish social media or computers or the internet, but we need to tell them how use it and we must take cyberbullying seriously because as you know there's so many stories of how children have committed suicide you have the whole blue whale disaster right and you know it's uh, it can be very very dangerous so again as has been said in the earlier lecture appreciate your child especially when they own up to cyberbullying like they come and they tell you that they're being bullied in fact, I remember recently a child that, um, you know, the mother brought her to me saying that she was being bullied uh, by whatever, she didn't even know how, because now children use avatars, they don't tell their real name, so they, you know, and a pseudonym, they are online, and uh, this avatar said that, you know, I'm following you and I'm going to make sure that something happens to you, and she was so scared that she told her mother, and the mother came to tell me, and then when we went a little bit into the history and the details, we found out that it was her own friends. And they were upset with some, something that she did. So they ganged up and more like a joke they did it. But they had no idea that it would have such a serious impact on the girl. So then I had a session with the whole group of friends, about six of them, all girls, and we discussed how this affects uh, you know, a simple thing that you do for a lark uh, because it's online and you cannot erase any digital footprint. It's there for life. So the impact of it is much larger. So those of you who are doing training programs, even for young people, please talk about cyberbullying because it's much common than uh, we think it is. Uh, we must assure protection. 
and uh, we have to collect evidence. So if it's an ongoing thing, uh, I always tell parents, please write down what the messages are, how they're being uh, delivered, and so on, and report to three things. So three Ps, the parents, Okay, you can approach, if it's in the school, to the principal, because this is actually something that should be taken up by schools and they should talk about not only physical violence, but also cyberbullying, as well as internet providers. And of course, the police and uh, cyberbullying comes under section 66A. A lot of counseling is required for the child and sometimes even to the perpetrators, because they are the ones who are very often hurt. They are the ones who are sometimes being bullied by somebody else. So it's like a cycle of violence. I'm being bullied, so then I bully someone who's more vulnerable than me. Right? The second important area is sexuality. Internet provides very easy access. Again, at the click of a button. A lot of young children nowadays are getting their sexuality education from the internet. And as I said, it's easy to... The, uh, you know, internet doesn't talk back to them and give them big uh, moral judgments. Uh, the parents sometimes are too embarrassed, so they'll say, who's putting these ideas in your head? This is not, you can't ask this question. Uh, you know, so, so what happens is that children keep quiet, and of course they go to the source which is e easily available. So again, research has shown 11 years average age of exposure to pornography, and yes, we know it's part of normal, uh, you know, adolescent development. However, we must talk to our kids about this and guide them. So as I said, sex education is happening online. And the most dangerous thing is internet predators. Very often, older people are posing as, you know, 16-year-olds or 12-year-olds and making friendships with our children, uh, sympathizing with them in their problems getting to know more about them. And children, sometimes they trust easily and then they'll give out personal information, right? They'll put on their Facebook, uh, you know, update home alone. I mean, that's just like an invitation to a sexual predator. So they are on the prowl posing as children and we must tell our children about this. So how are parents irresponsible? Do you think parents contribute to this? How do we act irresponsibly? What do we do? Yes. 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 Right. Outside the home. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. And now, how are parents uh, promoting media actually and uh, being irresponsible? Exactly. Correct. Yes. Okay. It's a competition also. Who can get the smartest phone, right? So, and children are very good at bullying their parents and convincing them. They won't say it's because, you know, they want to take photographs or talk to their friends. They'll say, you can download uh, some app for learning and, you know, science project may bhoot achha hoga and, and so on, right? And if parents are not aware, poor things, they say, okay, maybe, and buy that gadget. Yes, Yes. With an internet connection. So. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. And then the whole, your whole self esteem depends on how many likes you get. Many upma khaya, put it on social media. I didn't get, get a bus, put it on social media. So people also are putting their very personal day-to-day -day, um, information out on social media and expecting other people to notice, right? And then you count the number of likes, yes.
Yes. You remind me of a story. So now it's summer vacation and lots of people have been putting up about their holidays, right? So I'm going, someone's going to Europe, someone's going to Croatia, someone's going to, you know, London, wherever. So one of my friends put up this post says, he lives in Goa and in Panjim and his office is in Talegaon. So he says, today I'm going to Talegaon and I'm going to see so many things. I'm going to pass a river and there are going to be, you know, fruits in the market. And, you know, as a joke that, uh, I mean, his holiday is going to his office. But uh, everyone kind of got the message and there were a lot of uh, kind of funny comments over there. But yeah, so parents themselves have become self-obsessed with material things. And Children are watching, as uh, Dr. Nischel said. So they are watching, they are learning about this. And then, of course, we are also posting pictures of our children. That's a very dangerous thing. Parents are opening Facebook accounts when the baby is born in the name of the baby. Have you seen this? You're not supposed to be on Facebook till you're 18, right? But parents are doing this. So that's how sometimes we promote uh, irresponsible behavior. So how can we be a responsible parent, get unplugged ourselves? That's the first thing, especially at times when the other family members are around. We can have rules like no phones at the uh, meal times because then everyone is checking their messages. Be aware of images of your children. And uh, be very careful about posting personal details about your children, even about your schools, about, uh, you know, and uh, nothing is private on the internet, as I said. We, and we have to be a uh, role model of both our online as well as our offline behavior. In fact, we think online we are safe. It's private. Nobody can see us. But it's not true. You know, our online behavior is as uh, kind of open to the world as our offline behavior is. So it should match. I thought this was an interesting uh, way to look at it, the T-H-I-N-K. So is it true what we are posting? Sometimes we just forward messages. I mean, I know this uh, Azim Premji, some scholarships which has been going around for the last 10 years, I think, and still people forward it on WhatsApp, and it's complete rubbish. Okay, is it helpful? What I'm going to post, is it going to help somebody to learn or to increase the information? Is it inspiring or is it demeaning to somebody? Is it necessary? Do I really, does, do people really have to know how many saris I bought today when I went shopping or, uh, you know, what is the, whether I cook nice dal or not, and is it kind? Because respect is very, very important, and there's so much of abuse, which then can go on to cyberbullying uh, online, and it's really uh, kind of creating a lot of mental... So what can parents do? Start early to talk to your kids, update your tech knowledge. I can tell you this is very hard to do because it changes so fast. Lay down ground rules and start with yourself. So as I said, no phones at the uh, dining table. Uh, try and keep screens outside the bedroom also. Like, you know, your child having their own TV, uh, computer. I know it's, it's difficult, but uh, some way in which we can control the amount of time that they spend. Stay connected through face-to-face. -face. Uh, I must admit that it's easier to stay connected through WhatsApp. Uh, in fact, with my son, he's now 24, I can stay a lot more connected with him through WhatsApp uh, because he doesn't want me to spend time with him. I said, you know, I want to spend time in your room. No, 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 for what, what are you going to talk about? I'm busy. Come back later. Okay, but I can send interesting videos and, you know, I still sit. I say, I won't talk at all. That's how I connect with him. I won't talk at all. I just want to sit here in your room for a little while. Hmm. So he'll kind of disapprove. Okay, like, how much can she harm me? So I'll take a book and after about five minutes he'll be watching something. So that's really interesting. And then he'll start talking to me. So, you know, for me, technology is useful to connect with my child. Share values, even if they disagree with them. Of course, your children are going to say, you're old fashioned, world has changed, nobody thinks like this. But still, we need to share our values. I know, you know, when I was in my teens, I thought my parents didn't know anything. They were so kind of outdated, ancient. But when I became 27 and 37, I realized that really what they had told me had a lot of worth in it. So, you know, your time will come to, uh, to also kind of that value to be accepted. Use teachable moments. Teachable moments are something that's happening in real life, which you can use to talk to your child about something. So media provides great teachable moments. 
It could be, for example, a uh, you know, ad on television on condoms. Okay, that's a teachable moment because you know, it's, children don't have time to sit to hear one long lecture on sexuality with you. But if you talk to your child uh, on uh, things that they see on TV, or it could be a newspaper report, say on gay pride, that's the time to talk about homosexuality. Or it could be a commercial where you know, uh, there's a motorbike and the woman is kind of lying on the motorbike uh, wearing hardly any clothing on. And you can talk back to your TV and say, why are they showing that woman? She has nothing to do with the motorbike. They should be telling us how much that bike costs, uh, how often it needs to be taken for servicing, what is the mileage that it gives. So you're not saying this is very bad or anything like that, but you're talking back to your TV and your child is listening. So being a critical viewer that you don't accept whatever comes on TV as gospel uh, truth. Then check ratings. Very often parents are not aware. So Everything is free for all, right? But games, uh, and especially the violent games, have certain ratings. Movies, if it's an A movie, it is an A movie. Your child cannot watch it, okay, unless they are over 18 years. So we, it's important that we follow these rules and then apply them to our children. And of course, get professional help if it's a serious case of cyberbullying or uh, you know, internet addiction and so on. Quickly on screen control, this has already been said, the new uh, American Academy of Pediatrics, no screens before two years. You know, I can see all the parents in India groaning and saying, oh no, this can't be true. But yes, they say no screens before two years. Between two to five, just one hour a day. And from six to 16, two hours per day, out of which one hour is spent watching together with the parents. So you can talk to your parent, uh, talk to your child about what's happening. Monitor, of course, you may have to use web blocking software. There's a web blocker which is free of cost, so parental controls, so certain sites can be blocked off. You, very important to talk about values, what you believe in and why, uh, safety, sexuality, telling your child that if you have any questions, please come and ask me. If you are in any kind of trouble, please come and tell me. I will not get angry. This reassurance has to be given. Because if you say, please come and tell me, and my child says, oh, you know, uh, whatever, someone sent me this uh, video uh, on, on the internet, say, why did you take this on the phone? Who's this friend of yours? Like, why are you spending time with them? You can be sure the shutter of communication will just come down, right? And as I said, on violence and cyberbullying, we must, prevention is better than cure. So before it happens, we have to warn children about this and that they should always come and talk to their parents. Keep screens out of a child's bedroom. Try and delay smartphone ownership as much as possible. Um, it is hard. I know, like, when my son was growing up, I said no to a smartphone. He was 13, 14, 15, and then finally his aunt gave him one. Okay, so, <laughs> and my thing was this. Yes, you don't have to say no to your children. You say yes, but with a rider. So, I want a phone. Yes, when you can buy one yourself. Right? So uh, you can say, you know, uh, kind of be firm in, in this way. So you're not saying, no, I'm not buying your phone, but yes, later. Talk back to your TV. I've already mentioned that. Criticize what you see, especially if the values do not fit with yours. And it's better than changing the channel. When you change the channel, children know that you're uncomfortable. But when we talk back to our TV, that means we can discuss this. And of course, discuss programs and teach children to ask, is this program teaching me anything? Is it trying to sell me something, or is it just entertaining me? So quickly, five things to teach your children about commercials. Whatever they show on commercials is not true. So toys can never break, and you know everything works perfectly, uh, which is not true. They play with emotions, so you have that feel-good factor. So uh, for example, they'll show a father who's caring for the baby, and then they're they're trying to sell you some diapers. Okay, so the father feels very good and says, okay, I should buy these diapers. So feel good. Ideal women, uh, fair skin, you know, children who are very sweet, uh, perfectly dressed, uh, uh, kind of um, no problems at all. Products always shown in the best light. Big names, big bucks. So you have Amitabh Bachchan or uh, Amir Khan selling different products. Right, so we need to talk to our kids how advertisements are being used to sell things to us, and it's not what you what you see is not uh, is not always real. So for young children, preschoolers, ask them simple questions about the program. What did you see? What did you like? What could have happened next? What could have been different? Real or make believe? 
Is this real or is it just fantasy? It's very interesting. I've noticed over the years, I've been many years in developmental pediatrics. So there's this Denver test where there are pictures of different, uh, like there's animals and people and so on, and you have to ask questions and the child has to tell you what. So like who, uh, you know, um, who talks? So many children, will. there's a horse and there's a man. Many children point to the horse. Okay, because in TV they've seen so many fantasy and the movies nowadays where animals are animated, right? And, uh, you know, they think that the horse uh, actually talks. Let TV lead to other activities. So if it's an interest, a certain hobby, teach uh, them to tell time because they know what time their programs come on and ask them to tell the story in uh, their own words or changing the ending so you can foster imagination. For older children, comparing real life to real life. Okay, pointing out when it's against your values, using sensitive themes to discuss uh, various issues, learning geography, you can put an atlas uh, or a globe on top of your TV and they can check where the matches are happening or where uh, the cooking program is focusing on. Looking for connections in books, very important to talk about violence and how violence does not solve problems and what can be done instead of that violent uh, kind of um, solution. Uh, asking your teenagers opinions, discussing issues on TV, talking about who the advertisers are trying to reach, again, violence, and a lot of stereotypes on how women should be or how old people are or you know people with disabilities. So th the, uh, the program can be a starting point to discuss uh, these issues. I think this is a great way to remind children how to keep themselves safe. So very important that they think before they post. And here is peer pressure. I know of a 12-year-old girl who posted nude pictures of herself. And this is a child from a very loving family, only because on a lark, again, some friend of hers said, come on, let's do this. Okay, And the mother was devastated. She couldn't believe that her 12-year-old child had posted nude pictures of herself. You know, and. Uh, it's, it's as easy as that. You don't have to be some deviant person who doesn't have a loving family. Sometimes children don't think. Frontal lobes still not developed, can't make good decisions. Okay, So they need us to guide them. Only connect with friends and uh, friends who you know uh, personally. Be kind. Never share your password. Keep your settings private. Keep your information also private and never be hurtful towards others. And a few more things. Before you meet an online friend, someone whom you don't know face to face, in person, always tell your parents. Because sometimes there are these groups, like they may be interested in stamps or in chess and so on, but a lot of predators also pretend to be part of these groups. So if you're gonna meet somebody, always tell your parent. More than 18, you can't click there if you're not 18. And tell your parents if anything feels uncomfortable, if it makes you anxious, if it makes you feel bad, Okay, you must go and tell your parents. Thank you so much. I hope I haven't put anybody to sleep. And uh, I'm going to pass the mic on. Thanks a lot.